So uh, I'm, I'm Curtis. Um, I'm a business development manager for Man and Machine. I cover the southeast and, and southwest. Um, some of you, I can see some familiar names on there. So traditionally, I covered the north um, with Man and Machine. So there's some familiar people um, that are further north than I am this morning that will know who I am and will recognise the voice and unfortunately the face. Um, and then there's some people that I've met more recently as well. And then there's the people in the, the middle that I haven't met. Um, you're the lucky ones. Um, but this morning's uh, the Vault webinar, so I'll hand over to Frankie shortly. Um, but just to introduce myself a little bit more as well, um, this is me. For those of you that are fortunate enough or aren't fortunate enough to, to know the face, um, I've been with Man and Machine for a couple of years now. Um, mainly my experience is with OEM, so an automotive background. And uh, I've been for all of the Autodesk exams for the certified sort of different bits with design and visualization, material analysis, product design, um, and the rest of them as well. Um, I've got the questions in front of me as well today, guys, so um, ask them as they come in. Um, I had Mark asking for some audio a moment ago. I was just on mute and having a bit of a coughing fit. So uh, can you hear me okay now, Mark? Or is it possible for people to just ping some stuff in the chat to let me know you can hear me loud and clear before I keep going? Uh, maybe. I'm all good. I'm, get, I'm getting a nod from another room. So hopefully I'm all good and, and Mark, Mark, can, Mark can hear me now. Perfect. Oh, there we go. They're, they're all coming through. Good. Sorry, guys. So, yeah. So, so moving on. Um, so I'll just introduce you a little bit to Man and Machine. I'm sure most of you are familiar with us. Um, and for those of you that aren't um, at Group, um, Man and Machine have over 50 locations across Europe. Um, we're the largest Autodesk Platinum partner in Europe and largest of three in the world as well. We've got hundreds of thousands of installed seats sort of across Europe and we're focused or sort of two thirds of our business is focused on the manufacturing industry as well. Um, so on to sort of some of the software sort of that we do have and that is available to you. So you're familiar with the core of our business, which is Autodesk as a value added reseller. But on top of that, Man and Machine do have some of their own products to add some value to those processes and ensure that as well as the partnerships that we have, we can provide you guys with an end-to-end -end workflow that sort of suits your business. Um, additionally, uh, we're patrons or associates with some of the boards around the edge there, so Building Smart and the UK BIM Alliance. And some of our courses are also CPD certified as well, which is helpful. Um, You'll all know uh, that as the world is sort of developing and, and changing, there's big targets on reducing our waste and making sure that we can improve our products, sell more of them, and of course, increase profit. Uh, obviously, businesses rely on profit, and, and that's ultimately what it comes down to. And that originates from good quality products and being able to manage those internal processes to ensure that. Um, on to Vault, um, approximately 20% of people um, waste time looking for information. Um, so that is in fact a, a day a week, um, obviously 19.8% being the exact figure. The main selling point of Vault is how quickly you can find that data. So if it's a file to open or edit, um, a document to attach to a design, or files that relate to a specific project or and even customer. Um, so specifically, uh, maybe in the case of files that are related to a GA. It manages that three main ways, um, through data, uh, through people, and through your processes. Um, that's, I suppose, an, an example for each would be the ability to sort of quickly search and capture and reuse engineering related data um for the for the data side of things for people it, so it allows collaboration coordination across single or multiple design teams as well as engaging non-cad users um, and when it comes down to process on top of all that you have the ability to automate traditionally manual tasks so revision control and for example in vault work group you can allow sort of uh, you can implement the design life cycles that you already have and revision control directly into the data management system. Looking at this a bit closer and some of the different flavors of Vault that are available to you, um, you can see the functionality, excuse me, <clears throat> affects the users, the process and the enterprise. So an example for each of these 
would be with the users is Vault's AnyCAD features a, a strong selling point. It sits directly within the tools that the user is familiar with on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, so it's, it's great for that. For the process, as we mentioned, it allows you to track life cycle and revision management of your designs. But on top of that, it also allows you to carry out change management control. Um, so engineering change orders, as you're probably otherwise familiar with. Um, at an enterprise level, Vault can also support your enterprise-based benefits, so such as integration with your ERP or Active Directory and even multi-site replication. Um, so before I do sort of death by PowerPoint and hand over to Frankie, I'll, I'll just run you really briefly through some of our existing customers that we've helped implement Vault and some of the processes that we've sort of improved for them. Um, so you'll all be familiar with Kukurek and their ex excavators, I'm sure. Um, but we help them automate a really heavily manual process ultimately to improve their data and document management. Um, that was also then released to the broader team and helped them sort of significantly reduce the human error. Um, one of my customers, or one of, was one of my customers, um, Transdeck, who create uh, double decker uh, sort of trailers. Um, they were a really similar story, but their main pain point was they were duplicating a lot of their work. So introduced some similar workflows to Tracker and um, into Kukurek, sorry, and help them reduce again that human error and stop them duplicating the work and, and wasting yet more time. Um, Tracker's in my mind because they're up next. Um, so Tracker, you may or may not be familiar with, but I'm sure you come into contact with their products on a daily basis. Um, but they already had Vault Pro um, when we got introduced to Tracker, but we helped them take advantage of its full potential. They weren't really using it at all. They were kind of using Vault Basic. So we reconfigured and retrained their staff and now Tracker are using more of its features, um, specifically data standards. They're getting much better sort of return on investment for the Vault Pro deployment that they do have. Um, so the interesting bit, because, because Vault's boring, we, we brought Frankie along. So anyone that's familiar with Frankie um, will, will know that he's excitable, uh, but he's also one of Man and Machine's best assets. So he's got a lot of experience and masters in mechanical engineering, sort of his no mean feat. Um, so with that, I, I will hand over to Frankie. So if you bear with Hello, everyone. Thank you, Curtis. Don't believe him when he says it's bad to deal with him. He's a lovely human. Um, so uh, I, I'm here to talk about Vault today. I know it might not be the most exciting topic, but uh, anyone that's ever worked in the design office without proper data management knows what a pain it is to deal without such things. So I'm just going to show my screen. So I have a dream. The dream is to show you step-by-step uh, step the, uh, the different levels of Vault, starting with the, the free edition, which is Vault Basic, and then working up to the next level, which is Vault Workgroup and Vault Pro. Um, so I don't usually go on and on about the interface, but I'll just quickly talk about the, how Vault works. Primarily, when you're working with Vault, you're working with two windows. Can everyone see my screen all right? I will assume you can. Wonderful. Um, the, uh, you work with two main windows. So you've got your Vault here. And then you've got your inventor or AutoCAD or whatever other program you're working with. And they, they generally tend to work side by side. Uh, inventor does come with a Vault plugin. So strictly speaking, you don't need to have the, uh, the thick client um, operational at the moment. But uh, it just works a lot better with it. So uh, with that, let's just get into it. So the way that Inventor works is that uh, data is stored on a uh, Vault server, which might sit in, uh, you know, under the staircase at your office or you know, in the computer next to you. In my case, it's running on my computer. I strongly don't recommend hosting the Vault on your machine. Um, and the idea is that the design data is stored on that server. So where's the advantage of this? How is it any different from just uh, storing your design data on a network drive? The idea is that you can, um, Vault can allow you to have greater control over how you're manipulating your designs. It's also possible for multiple people to work on uh, the same design concurrently um, without having to take copies and reconcile differences later. It can help with things like copying, renaming, uh, searching, uh, and um, history, uh, version history, and a whole bunch of other things which we'll have a look at. So let's look at one of those in here. We've got a toy train. Um, and just like you would have in, uh, in, on, your, um, on your network drive, you'd have your assemblies and your part files. So th this one's already been checked into Vault. It's sitting on the Vault server. And we can see, let's go over to the uh, train assembly. 
And here we can see a whole bunch of things regarding that train assembler. <clears throat> so we've got its design history, what it uses. So here we've got all of its children. So there we've got the sub assemblies and under each of those sub assemblies, we've got each of the parts. We've also got where used. So if it was participant in a drawing or a greater assembly above it, it would show up. Uh, say for example, this carriage, for example, uh, is used in the train assembly. So it's very, very easy to see where a particular design gets used. This fourth tab along sees if it's participant in any engineering change orders, which is a feature that's just in Vault Pro, which I'll discuss a bit later. And at the right here, we've got a preview. Um, so uh, if you've got non-CAD users, uh, they're still able to see previews generated um, within Vault. Usually this is in the form of DWFs, but you can also have 2D and 3D PDFs produced automatically. So what does that translate to in the real world? Imagine that we've got a design. So we've got uh, we've got these three designs. We've got a winged captive screw, we've got a remote arm and a mechanical grip. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the remote arm. So it's just an assembly. Here we go. Pretty potato design, but I used it in one of our blogs to discuss about uh, positional representations and levels of detail. It's riveting stuff, I tell you. Um, so um, at the moment, this is just sitting on my PC. I've just whacked this together and I wanna bring it into Vault. So how do I do that? Um, all we need to do is go to the Vault tab in Inventor. So I'll just close it down, hit this little plus here and go into the Vault. Here I've got the assembly. Now uh, I've put in a landmine for myself. This is not only uh, just the parts and the assemblies, it's also got associated drawings. So I'll just open up one of those drawings so you can see it. Here we go, open drawing. There we go. So there's a whole bunch of associated and really poorly made drawings um, associated with each of these parts. Uh, so I'm just gonna move this, there we go. Um, so we wanna check them all into Vault. We'll go over to the Vault tab. We'll right click the assembly and say check in. It says it needs to be saved before checking in. Do you wanna do that? Sure. There we go. So by default, what it's done is it's grabbed the parent and it's grabbed all of the children. So in this case, it's got the major assembly and then each of the parts associated with it. If I were to click okay, it would grab those IAM and IPT files and literally copy them from my computer into the Vault um, for management there. However, I also wanted to gather along those associated drawings. Um, so what I'm going to do is click this button here and it's going to grab associated drawings. So say for example, you've got a linked Excel document or you've got um, an IDW or a DWG that's associated with each of the parts. It will go through and it'll search for each of them and include them in the check-in process. Extremely useful. Here we can put in a comment. Um, it's not mandatory because if you make things mandatory, people just stick their tongue out and put full stop there. But I'm going to be disciplined and say initial check-in. Wonderful. And I'm going to say, okay. And that's literally taking copy from my local computer over to the Vault server. So here we'll have a look in Vault. I'll hit the refresh button. It's a bit slow, there we go. Um, I'll hit the refresh button and now we can see that the remote arm design has been copied into the vault. So I might say, oh, you know, this is great. I've got my parts and my drawings. Hey, wait a second, didn't I have a rendering and a bomb included? Ah, I did, I did, I didn't include it. Look at this potato rendering, terrible. But I still wanna include it in the vault because I'm proud of it. So I'm going to grab that rendering and the Excel document and I'm literally gonna click and drag them into the vault book. Beautiful, they're, they're being copied into the vault. Um, they're non-design files, so you don't need to go through any particular special software to bring them in. Um, you can just drag and drop them in. So we'll quickly go over to the assembly and let's have a look at what it uses. So all of the child files, we've got the assembly and each of the parts associated with it. Now I think ahead, ah, if, if somebody is um, copying this from the vault, wouldn't it be nice that when they take a copy of this assembly, it includes that rendering and the Excel document as well, the, the, the bill of materials. So what we can do is we can add artificial children, fostered, fostered files um, that will be added to this assembly. So I'll choose the assembly 
And I'll click the little paper clip. And what this allows me to do is add attachments to that file. So here I can choose the rendering file and the uh, bill of materials, add them as attachments, and now they're included in that assembly. So if another f uh, person were to come along and take a copy of that assembly and all of its children, they can also include the attachments and they'll get the bill of materials, the rendering or you know, a user manual or license agreement or warranty or whatever it may be. Um, so it's very, very dynamic in that way, which is fantastic. Okay. Uh, so that's, yep, check in, check out, blah, blah, blah. So um, it offers a whole bunch of utilities as well. Um, so one of them, if anyone's tried to ever rename a file in Inventor, you know that you'd rename the part file, open up the assembly file, and you'd have to reconcile the file. You'd have to um, point the assembly to the renamed part file, which is very, very laborious, particularly if you've got a lot of files to rename. So um, Vault allows you to rename and it will automatically reconcile those changes. If anyone was eagle-eyed, they would spot that there's a terrible, terrible flaw here. We've got part two, part three, part four, part five. But then part one, there's no space between the part and the one. And the OCD part of me is going absolutely crazy. So we have to rename the parts um, and reconcile the bomb, uh, reconcile the assembly. So ordinarily, this would be a laborious process, renaming the part, opening the assembly, reconciling it. Uh, resolving it, sorry, that's the word, um, and then uh, saving it again. But in Vault, it's very easy. All I need to do is find the part in the drawing, right click and say rename. And here it's picked up on the two files. I say next. And here I can rename it. Oh, uh, I've accidentally uh, forgot to turn those off there. They automatically generated number sequences. Um, but here I can give it a manual name. So part. Oops. Bear with me, I have malconfigured my vault. Uh, chuk, 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 chuk. Numbering schemes, default is none. Here we go, wonderful. Rename. That's better. And here I can say part space one dash base. And do that for both the drawing and the, the part. It goes through, updates the part files to the same version of it. And now when I open up the assembly, I'll find that things are appropriately named and no resolution is, uh, no resolving is uh, is required. Beautiful. So um, that's renaming, very, very straightforward. Um, another wonderful thing that Vault does is uh, that it records all properties. So let's have a look at one of these parts, for example, the upper arm. It's made of ABS plastic. So th that's just, uh, that's design information about it um, that uh, when you check it into Vault, gets recorded down. Um, and that's super useful for being able to search. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'll just check this back in. Oh, it's already checked in. Wonderful. What I'm going to do here, I'll just undo check it. Um, what I'm going to do here is conduct a search. So every time a file gets checked into Vault, whether it's a PDF file or a design file or anything like that, um, it, uh, Vault takes note of the metadata, so data about the data. And I'll show you very quickly. These are the properties that it keeps track of. So uh, say, for example, what's the material or who is the engineer that put it together or what's its mass? Or, uh, you know, um, I don't know, uh, what's the warranty date? Or what's the stock number, et cetera, et cetera? Who's the client? Um, so all of this information gets tracked and you can configure what information gets tracked so you can do index searches. So say I'm interested in searching the entire vault and I wanna do two different searches. The first search, I'm going to search for materials and the second search, I'm going to search for a uh, checked out status. So here, under the search panel, I'm going to go ahead and find material. And I'm going to say, give me all the materials that consist of ABS plastic. And that's my only search criteria. I'll click find now. And as fast as lightning, it goes through the entire vault and finds all the parts that are made of ABS plastic. This search might be, uh, you know, give me all the things with this stock number or all the, the parts in this project. If you think that you're going to be reusing a search again and again, 
Oops. If you think you're going to be reusing a search very often, um, then uh, it's possible to, to save a search. I'll show you where that's particularly useful. Say it's my turn to make a change to this toy terrain. I'm going to right click it and say check out. Check out gives me writing permission, allows me to edit the part. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, check out the upper body. Actually, in fact, I'll, I'll check out this whole thing. Wonderful. It's all checked out to me. Now, I'm going to create a search. And it's the end of my uh, tenure, and now I'm going to go on holidays, and I want to check out, uh, check back in everything that I've checked out to myself. So here, I'm going to come along and say, let's search by checked out by. Contains Francisco. Click add as the search criteria, and click find now. And this gives me a list of all of the parts that are checked out to me. But say that I want to conduct this search very often and I don't want to go through all the process of setting it up. Um, what we can do is save the search. So I'll say save search and I'll say all files checked out by Francisco. And what that has done has created a folder here that is automatically and always populated by that search criteria. So say, for example, I were to go back and undo that checkout. So now nothing is checked out to me. That folder is empty. The checkout and check-in uh, system is really, really good because it allows multiple people to work on the same components, um, uh, the same assemblies with different components. So say, for example, uh, a few colleagues and I, we're all working on this toy train assembly and I'm reworking the engine. So, uh, you know, if I wanted to be pedantic, I could check it out and open up and edit the, the part directly, but Volt's very clever. I can just simply open up the train assembly, not check it out. So there's the, the full assembly. I know it's a masterpiece. Um, say no to it. Oops. Uh, yes. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, op oops, uh, I'm going to open up the engine and try to make a change to it. So let's say, for example, uh, I've decided that um, it needs chamfer on the front. The moment that I try to make a change to it, so say, for example, add the chamfer on the front, it says, aha, that file that you're trying to edit, you're looking at it, it's great, but you're, it's not checked out to you. You don't have permission to write to it. Do you want to check it out? And so I'll say yes. And now I've made my change to the engine. And if I go to the Vault tab, I can see that the engine has been checked out to me. Say that Joe, who I work with, is working on that carriage assembly. He would have the same situation. He would have opened up the assembly. He would have made a change to the carriage. And then uh, it would have prompted him to, to check it out. Then uh, he would have checked it out. And this is fantastic because it means that multiple people can all be referencing and working on the same general assembly, all working on different parts without stepping on each other's toes. Oh, I seem to have met. Yeah, excellent. Cool. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm happy with that. I'm done with it. What I want to do is check it in. Oops, I need to save it first. There you go. There we go. Um, added chamfer. And I can close that down. What that's done has, is it's taken a, a copy of the modified engine assembly and copied it over to the vault. And here I can see the design history of the engine. So there was the original engine, and this is the, the version of it, the latest version that has the chamfer added to it. Comments help your colleagues see the, the kind of things that you've changed about it. It is possible to revert back to previous versions, and if anyone's interested, I can show you how to do that later. Um, but what Vault does is it incrementally keeps track of all the versions. So wonderful. All right, so uh, something that happens very, very commonly in engineering is that you have a design, and you know, you, you'll get it done, you'll complete it, it'll go out the door. And then another job will come along with uh, the requirement for a very, very similar design with something slightly different. So I'm going to go start to finish um, with how to do that in, in Vault. So here I've got a design for a mechanical grip. Um, just give me one moment. I'm just going to make sure that that uh, numbering scheme thing. There you go. Great. Wonderful. Um, OK, so I've got this mechanical grip. 
it's not my design, but I recolored it, so I, I've adopted it. Okay, so this is something that we've put together for a previous project. I'm going to bring it into Vault. So I'll come to Vault, right click it, check it in, and say so initial check in. There are no associated drawings or anything like that, so I'm just going to say okay. Beautiful. And I'll show you something that's very interesting about Vault as well. Um, because I've checked it into Vault, it's possible for me to delete my local copy. So there I've got my mechanical grip file. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. It's gone. If I go into Vault now, I can see that the mechanical grip has been copied into the Vault. And say hypothetically, I wanted to take a local copy of this mechanical grip. What I can do is right click it and say, a get command. All that get does is takes a copy from the vault and puts it onto your server. You don't have permission to edit it, but you do have a local copy. So I'll say get. I'll grab all the dependents, so all the children and all the attachments, and say OK. And there, back from the dead, I've got my mechanical gripper. Excellent. So let's have a look at that design. I'm not going to check it out. I'm not interested in editing this one just yet. But what I have is a requirement. So we've got a new project, and my boss says, okay, uh, we want to have exactly the same design, same motors, same displacements, but these arms have to be 125 millimeters longer. So you say, oh, God, well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to copy the whole design, we're going to have to create new parts, we're going to have to edit it. It's a very data intensive process, but Vault luckily makes it very, very easy. We'll quickly take note of the parts that we want to edit. So I'll go into this subassembly and then this part here, and we can see that the first part is 210104, which is that arm there. The second part here is 210109. So what we want to do is uh, reuse all of the components of this assembly, but make duplicate copies of these two parts, which we're then going to later modify. So how do we do that? By the way, just, ooh, so nice. Love the design. Whoever put it together, good work. All right, so what I'm going to do is close that down and go into Bolt. So here we've got the mechanical grip. Now, very, very creative um, because the mechanical grip that we're going to be making now is going to be slightly larger. We're going to call it mechanical grip XL. So here I'll go, make a new folder, and say mechanical grip. Excel. Wonderful. Beautiful. Okay, so in this um, to reiterate, what we want to do is we want to reuse all of these components, except we want to make new sub assemblies and we want to make uh, modifications to those parts 104 and 109. So how to do that easily. Um, this is available in Vault Basic, Workgroup and Pro. Um, the Workgroup and Pro have a particularly nice dialogue for it. So we'll grab the, the general assembly and we're going to say copy design. And here we've got all of the uh, the assembly and each of its children and each of its grandchildren and so forth and so forth. So what I'm going to do is grab the assembly and also grab the parts that we want to make uh, duplicates of, we want to make copies of. So we'll say that one there and uh, 204, 109, um, that one there. Beautiful. So we're going to right click these and say copy to and we're going to copy them to mechanical grip excel and ha ha what this has done is a few things it's made a copy of the main assembly it's made a copy of each of the parts that we're going to modify but it's also made a copy of the um of the assemblies to which it's participant the sub assemblies this is because these sub assemblies in composition are different from the originals so vault was clever enough to realize oh it's not sufficient to make a copy of the child part we also need the sub assembly we need to make a, a change to that so on the right here we've got the opportunity to uh rename the parts add prefixes add suffixes um the, uh, you can do this automatically or you can do it manually. I'm just going to do a semi-automatic process. So I'll grab all of these parts, right click, and I'm going to get rid of the prefix value. But what I'm going to do is add in a suffix value, so space Excel. So 
just add each of these parts. And so the, the copied parts, the duplicated parts, it's going to be mechanical grip Excel, uh, uh, the part, you know, 210, 109, Excel, Excel, blah, blah, blah. Once we're happy with that, what we can do is execute the copy. Beautiful, done, very quick, very easy. So let's review. What we've got is our mechanical, uh, mechanical grip. There it is, the original assembly. And here we've got the Excel version of it. Now you might say, ah, there's a catastrophe. What happened? You know, there's only so few files. These are just the duplicates. These are the ones that are being modified for the new design. If we were to go into mechanical grip excel.iam and look at the files that it uses, we'll be very, very happy to see that it is using the, the new version of the new duplicate copies of the files that we wanted, the arms that are to be lengthened, but um, it's reusing the original components of that first mechanical grip design that we did. So that way we're not flooding the vault with it, and that way if we want to change a common component uh, that, that we produce a million of in the workshop, um, we don't have to go through every single version, every single um, instance of that design. We can just simply reuse components. And copy design, in, in my opinion, is one of the best features of Vault. The amount of pain that it saves is just incredible. Um, so cool, uh, let's do a little bit of 3D modeling. I promise it won't take too much time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the uh, assembly file. It'll say it's not checked out. Do you wanna check it out? Yes. So it'll bring it into, uh, bring it into Vault. Um, so while I'm in town, what I'm going to do is uh, edit each of these parts. So I'll go into the part, go into the part, and I'm going to do a super, super dirty, but super effective um, method for making these longer. I'll do a direct edit and say negative 125. It says it's not checked out. Do you want to check it out? Yes to all. And the arm is longer. Beautiful. I'll do the same for the other. So we'll come along, boop, boop. Once again, I'll grab, uh, if I remember right, that was a trick here. Yes, that's right. So I'll go ahead, uh, grab these faces to extend them out, but I don't want to move these holes here. So I'll go ahead and make these whole arms 125 mil longer. It says check it out, absolutely. Wonderful, return, return. And ah, lovely, excellent, beautiful. We've got a, a mechanical gripper XL, and that took two minutes today. So yep, we're happy with the design. Um, I'll go ahead and save it all. And I'm going to check it back into the vault. And we're going to say, uh, it's asking for a comment, I'll say lengthened arms by 125 millimeter. Say okay. And that's checked back into vault. And now we've got the files, uh, there we go, uh, with their history. So there's the original copy where it says it was copied from this original source file and the, the change that we made lengthened the arms by 125 mil. So lovely, very lovely. Uh, it saves a lot of pain in that way. Um, so one more thing that I'd like to show you about Vault Basic before we move on to the uh, the functions of Vault Workgroup and Pro. Um, uh, oftentimes you've got a lot of drawings in separate parts. You might have one drawing and it might have 10 sheets in it. Um, and you've got, you know, 60 of those, of those drawings. So, you know, 600 sheets and plotting has traditionally been a bit of a pain. So what we can do here is use the batch plot. Um, that's an, uh, in vault. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to grab the assembly, the general assembly itself and come over here to file and find plot. And what I've got here is a dialogue that lets me find all of the associated uh, drawing sheets, uh, all the associated drawings attached to it. So I'll say add related drawing sheets. Oh, whoops, that's manually. I'll go ahead and say, oh, where is it? Well, no, that's items, so two, six. Where is it, where is it? Add related drawing sheets, I'll find the remote arm assembly. 
There we go. And it finds all the associated, uh, all the drawings associated with its children and its uh, grandchildren if, if you instruct it to. Um, and what you can do is tell it how many copies you need. Is it printing to PDF or is it printing to a hard copy? You ever notice how weird it is to call it hard copy and soft copy? Because hard copy stuff can be destroyed, but soft copy is resilient. But here we go. Um, we, all we need to do is say file and we can say uh, print and it will go off and print sheet by sheet, um, drawing by drawing, um, all of the associated in a very, very quick process. So very, very straightforward, pretty mundane, but extremely useful. So th that's the, the core functionality of um, Vault Basic. I'm sure that there's uh, more than a few things that I've missed out on there, um, but uh, I thought it'd be more fruitful to go through some of the functionality of Vault well, Workgroup and Prep. Um, so what Vault well, Workgroup uh, allows you to do is take it to the next level. It allows you to uh, use things such as categories and life cycles, revisions and numbering schemes. Um, so let's consider something like, uh, let's go along here and we'll find the toy train. Um, we've checked in the toy train, we're happy with it, um, but what we really want to do is um, is uh, start the development process. So basically we want to have engineers uh, iteratively working on the design. What I've done is I've set this up so that things can participate in categories. So here I've got production instances, I've got R&D standards and documents. Um, I'm going to assign them to the R&D category. Now, you might notice that I'm doing this manually. It's extremely easy to uh, set up rules in Vault so that the moment a file is copied into the Vault, it automatically gets assigned to a category. So an example of that might be uh, uh, all PDFs are automatically listed under the standards and documents category, um, whereas not all designs belong to R&D is why I'm selecting it manually. So here we go. I'm going to assign them to the R&D category. And that's done a few things here, as we can see. Um, so what I can notice now that uh, is it's got a life cycle state, so work in progress, and it's got a revision, so revision A. It didn't have those things before, but now it does. So what we go ahead and do is uh, say that we want to take this from work in progress to for review to released, um, and then we want to make a change to it. So let's go ahead, um, we can grab the components. So I might grab these two parts here, for example, and I might say, okay, yep, I wanna change their state and I wanna change it from work in progress to for review. Say that I'm a junior engineer and I wanna pass it on to the senior engineers for checking. I'll mark it to for review. They might have a saved search over here that, that has all the reviews or they might get a, an email notification um, that something has been pushed to for review. And those senior engineers will come along and check the four review. They might say, oh, that's wonderful, and then push it to released. Um, I'll grab these guys as well, change the state, change them to four review. Everything has been checked. Senior engineer says, yep, they're all right. And so she right, comes along here and says, right click, change state, and changes it from four review to released. Wonderful. And just to quickly show you, what we've got is a little padlock icon next to it. So junior engineer me comes along and I say, yep, I wanna make another change to the engine. And I, I right click it and I wanna say, yeah, yeah, let, let's modify that window. It says it's, it's locked. Do you wanna try editing it? You can edit it and you can do it, but you won't be able to save that change because that file in being released is locked you won't be able to check it back in. So um, how does how does said junior engineer make a change to this? So they might ask senior engineer, hey, I need to make a change to that engine. Can you, uh, can you um, push it back to uh, work in progress? So she might come along here and say, right click, change state, work in progress, and keep an eye on the revision. At the moment, it's revision A and it bumps it up to revision B, as does the parent assembly of which it is participant. So now junior engineer me can come along here, open it up, check it out, make a change. This change might be a chamfer on the back, very creative. Save it, check it in. I probably should have put in the chamfer in the comment. Oh, the lack of discipline, it's terrible. Um, and here we can see that it's kept track of the change. So 
in that respect, it can keep track of um, life cycles. So this particular life cycle for R&D is work in progress for review, released, quick change, obsolete. Uh, and it's very, very good at keeping track of revisions. It's also very good at locking down files that it considers to be released. Um, now, consider that we're going to be um, producing something. So say, for example, we're actually going to be producing this sheet metal box. Um, what we might actually do is come along here and say change category. And here we might make it a production um, category. And it's got its own life cycle. So here we've got uh, work in progress, but then it's got for review, pre-released, and released. A different life cycle entirely. It's got its own revision scheme. Revision one to you know 99, depending on uh, on uh, what stage along it is. And all of these things like life cycles and revision states are completely configurable to um, to uh, to your company's way of doing things. Um, I don't think I've ever gone to any two companies that have done everything in exactly the same way, um, which is why numbering schemes, automatic numbering schemes, don't come out the box. Um, it is very, very easy to set up a numbering scheme, but uh, it's generally down to that company to, to set that up. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, let's go ahead and add in a numbering scheme. So here we go, we'll say numbering scheme, and we're going to say, uh, I don't know, uh, let's go say and say man and machine productions. And what we're going to do is specify fields that will be automatically numbered. So we might have a predefined list and we might say, um, I don't know, component, was it uh, production? Oh, no, no, um, type. And we might add, this is a R and D. And we might say, this is analysis. And we might say production and analysis. Oh, and make one default. Then we can add in a delineator. So I might just go ahead and say, yep, let's go ahead and say delimiter book hyphen. Then we might have an automatically generated number sequence. So we might say uh, sequence six digits automatically padded starting at one or zero. Say OK. Then we might add in another delimiter dash. And then maybe uh, the ability to add in a uh, free text that is a variant. Default value, zero, zero, max length, two. Beautiful, forced up case. So what we've done is we've created a numbering scheme and we've, we're going to make it default. So what does it look like in practice? We'll come along here. We'll make a new part. Where are we? There we go. If you haven't worked out already, I like chamfers. Wonderful. So we're going to go ahead and save that and see what happens. Ah, it's brought in my numbering scheme. I get to choose whether it's a production model or a, a model for analysis. Um, and then it's automatically going to sequence that number. And here I can add in a variant if I want to. I'll say okay. And here it's created the file name automatically. Uh, auto generated number, numbers. There we go, that'll do. Now, the moment that I come along and I make a, a new production part, so say for example, let's go ahead and make a second one. And I go ahead and save that. I'll choose production again and leave the sequence. And here it's incremented to the next one, to one, and then two, then three, and then four, then five, or whatever your uh, numbering sequence might be. So uh, examples of numbering schemes can be things like this. So say, for example, we've got different kinds of fasteners. So here we might be able to choose what kind of fastener it is, uh, you know, what kind of fittings it goes into, the size, blah, 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 blah. Um, numbering schemes are as many colors as in a rainbow. The, uh, it's really up to you to set them up. But uh, yeah, Vault can automatically generate numbering sequences, which um, reduces the amount of discipline required for users. So those are the core cool functionalities of Vault Workgroup. Once again, there's probably a few things that I've missed out that um, yeah, time's running a bit short because I tend to babble on. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about the, the functionality of Pro and then I'll hand you back to Curtis. Um, 
So Pro, uh, Pro, what it does is allows you to deal in items, engineering change orders, and in my opinion, and far coolest is what's called the, the Vault Thin client. So uh, I've long dreamed, I've long dreamed of the paperless office, but uh, it, it seems to be impossible to get away from the paperless office. Um, you know, whether you're writing down a drawing, you know, to explain something, or whether you're, you know, you've got uh, a drawing for the workshop, it invariably seems to get printed out and then handed over to somebody. Um, but th that's got a number of problems. You know, paper is destroyable. Uh, you know, it can fall out of revision. Say, for example, you're up to revision G, but they're working to revision D because the drawing was printed out in February. Um, the paperless office has a very, very big allure um, in terms of efficiency and getting things done. So uh, why did I mention all that? I'll show you now what's called the thin client. This is uh, something that's available in Vault Pro. And what uh, the thin client is, is essentially a website. Uh, I've got a hotkey for it here. There we go. Um, there we go. And it works very, very similar to the thick client that we've been dealing with. And in fact, it's possible to use all the functionality if you allow it. However, and this is the cool part, if you come along here and say read-only access, and you sign in with read-only access, an unlimited number of people can log into this vault, which is fantastic. If you have 200 people on your shop floor or across various sites, and they all want to access the vault, you don't have to purchase 200 seats of Vault Pro. You just need to have you know, 40 or so for the design office or however big your team is. Um, and then the, work group, uh, the workshop can all use the read-only access. And that's fantastic. So I'll quickly grab one of the drawings and I'll quickly um, push it to release so we can see it there. So I'll go ahead and I'll say, yeah, it would be a good example of it. We'll say R&D and we're going to change the state to released for all of these. Wonderful. Those drawings are released. So now workshop person on an iPad can go over to the Vault Thin client, come along to the Project Explorer, come to Designs, come to the remote arm, and find the drawing. So let's go ahead and find arm one, which I detailed a little bit. IDW. And here we go. Ah, I didn't install the um, I didn't install the viewer for it. But if you had a viewer plugin for um, well maybe I did. Here we go. Negative, I did not. Um, if you had the viewer plugin for um, for your uh, explorer, which is downloadable for free, um, you can access that without Inventor, without Vault, just on a, on a small tablet computer. Um, so no need to to hand out drawings manually. Um. This, for somebody who hates drawings, is a fantastic change, an absolutely wonderful, scalable solution to it. And for me, it's worth the price of the ticket. Um, so other things that Vault Pro deals in is, uh, well, ERP integration, which uh, requires uh, quite a bit of setup, um, but it can do it. Uh, living bombs, so say, for example, uh, you're dealing with uh, a bill of material um, and you want to deal with it directly in Vault, uh, you can produce them here. So I might come along here, grab my remote arm, and do, let's say, create item. Oh, sorry. There Oh, let's try it with another one. Assign item. Oh, seems to be hiccuping on me. Just a moment. Ah, there it is. Wonderful. Cool. Um, so this is the the item, the actual thing that gets produced on the shop floor. Now this is wonderful because it's possible to deal with the bill of materials directly. Inside of uh, inside of Vault, and you can do all the shenanigans that you do uh, in Inventor. So, say for example, uh, this this remote arm comes with a a spare head. So rather than just one head, 
you can override the quantity here and say it comes with two heads. Save it and close. And what we've got here are the items that are being produced and we can deal with the bill of materials directly in Vault. This is fantastic because you can then print them off, send them on to the SAP system, change quantities and all of that. And if the assembly changes in the design, this bomb gets updated automatically. You don't have to re-export an Excel document to make sure that it goes to the right people. Um, so this is getting into the, the upper tiers of the design office. So everything is very, very <clears throat> heavily regimented and organized. Um, the last one that I want to show you is engineering change order. Uh, so what we might do, if you have sufficient privileges, you can create an engineering change order. So here I might uh, make a change order title. So here I might say, okay, let's say choo, 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 lengthen arms. Lengthen uh, arm two, for example. Lengthen arm two in remote arm assembly. Can save that. And here, what I can do is associate files with it. So here I might come along and I can attach uh, not only the, the part that I want modified, so I might say, let's go ahead and find ARM2, but I can also attach, say, uh, you know, a, a drawing that I've scanned in that describes the kind of changes that I want to. Come along to here, route it along, and depending on how you've got this set up, uh, the uh, relevant junior engineer might get a notification that they've got an ECO assigned to them and uh, they can open up their ECO, say, ah, yes, 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 find the associated drawing, make the associated change, uh, push a request back to the um, back to the senior engineer, is this okay? And then they can close out that ECO. So it's really the final level of uh, design, uh, design office management uh, that's offered by the pro. So uh, that wraps it up for uh, the things that I wanted to discuss. I'm going to pass you back to Curtis. If you have any questions, by all means, uh, put them into the chat. Uh, Curtis will relay them to me and I'll do my best to answer them. So thank you very much for your attention and your energy. Appreciate it. Curtis? Hey, um, cheers, Frankie. So um, I don't know if I've got presentation back. Um, yeah, anyway, so that, that, there we go. We're back. Um, so that was uh, that was Frankie. Um, so now you can see why we chose our excitable Frankie to deliver the, the boring <laughs> whole, um, presentation. Um, like I says, now's the time to start firing over some questions. There's there's a couple already um, that I'll, I'll get to in a moment. Um, but just to sign off of a couple more slides that I just want to share with you guys before we uh, before we log off. So um, a lot of our customers recently have been sort of wanting to, to dip their toe into Vault, but sometimes nervous about the, the larger deployments or, or what it might come with. Um, so our technical manager, Rob, has kindly been working on um, some out-of-the-box configurations that are a little more accessible uh, to, to get to grips with Vault. Um, to begin with, obviously, most Vault deployments will need some further configuration uh, as you go down the line and, and you do start to take advantage of its extended features. Um, but these are a couple of examples of the type of thing that we're able to offer, um, I suppose, quicker and at a lesser value to get you up and running or or out of the box, so to speak. Um, so there's Vault Basic, which is up to five users for £1,800. And then there's the, the Vault, which is up and running work group or professional um, for up to five users as well um, for 2750 So if you've been thinking about it for a while and, and you're not confident that you're going to use all of the features and, and you just want to actually get some form of document management up and running, then this is the perfect place to start. And another slide that I chucked in, I share this with all of my customers um, when I bore them with the corporate presentation, um, but these are our blogs. Um, there's a lot of Vault blogs uh, that people like Frankie and, and our, our Chris's that are also our, our Vault sort of experts um, kindly spend a lot of time writing up, uh, I suppose, common issues, quick fixes uh, that are accessible for you without having to either call up the support desk or trawl through the Autodesk forums to, to find an answer. Um, so if you're ever wondering why that's happening and, and you think you're able to quickly fix it yourself, then that's a great place to, to go and locate, locate those so that they're on our website. Um, so go and take a look and hopefully you'll find something that's useful. Um, 
so what's next if, if you are interested in any of the out of the box offerings or you've just got some more bespoke questions that maybe can't be answered at the back end of this webinar then drop me a line um, if it's not myself that deals with it directly then I'll make sure that it gets to the right person or we can even arrange a time for you to speak with Frankie or one of our en other engineers um, or give us a call we'll pick up the phone and we can go over it it's a bit more personal as well um, so that that brings us to the end